Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce uh, Small Business Technical Assistance uh, Workshop. Uh, we welcome you today to come on in. We're going to um, get started. Feel free to uh, make sure that you are sharing this, letting people know that we are here and we're starting. We're going to get started at exactly 12, I mean, 10.05, so we got less than four more minutes. Um, you can open up the chat. Um, say hello into the chat. Um, this is, while we're not in person, this is still a marketing um, and networking event. So be sure to put into the chat your business, who you are, what you do. You never know if someone's going to need your services. So definitely um, say good morning into the chat and uh, put in your information so that people know who is in the room, what services um, you have. And also it gives our presenter an opportunity to tell her um, some of her examples of what you can do at Miami-Dade County to the businesses in the room. So definitely um, say hello into the chat. I see you, Melissa. Make sure you tell us who you are, what you do. I um, mean, we will um, get started. I am going to um, go live on Facebook to bring in our uh, Facebook community. Well, we want you to uh, join us. All right. We see Natasha is a business consultant serving the Haitian American community. Good morning, Natasha. All right. Yeah, folks coming on in. All right. Definitely come in and join us. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. I see Rodney from uh, Dream Clean. Thank you for joining us. For those that are coming on in, my name is Matthew Pagan, Director of Small Business Membership uh, Services, and we are having our final technical assistance workshop of the year. Um, bringing on one of our um, closest partners uh, we've had for many, many years, uh, Miami-Dade County and the Small Business Development um, Department, headed by none other than the Section Chief, uh, Miss LaWanda Wright. So come on in. All right. And we're going to go live on Facebook. All right. So I want to welcome everyone on Facebook to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce uh, Technical Assistance Workshop, The Next Level Business. This is part of a series we've been doing um, all year, focusing on uh, really developing small businesses on that next level. Last year, we did our focus on um, the ABCs of business, and we want to take you to that next level, which is scaling the business. And so we're going to get started in less than one minute on here. And if you are on uh, Facebook, make sure you share this. You know, some people that you may know may need this information. So share it on your profiles, click the link to join us and ask your questions. Uh, one of the values of these um, programs is the ability to ask questions. So it is now 10.05, and I want to officially welcome everyone to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce Technical Assistance Workshop. My name is Matthew Pigan, I'm Director of Small Business Membership Services for the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. And we have with us um, today uh, Ms. LaWanda Wright, who is the Small Business Development Section Chief for Miami-Dade County, here to talk to you about um, certifying your business. Uh, this workshop is part of a series that we've been doing all year, and we do every year. Um, every month we have a technical assistance workshop on different subjects, whether that be how to start your business, uh, what do you need to do to get certified, to do different governing bodies, how to do digital marketing, um, how to access capital. This is all the things that we do on a regular basis here at the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. And after the presentation, we'll tell you a little bit more about our technical assistance programs, how you can get in touch with us, and if you would like to be a member, um, those things coming up. 
So without uh, further ado, I would like to get us jump right on into our topic for today. And I want to bring in Ms. Uh, LaWanda Wright to get us started. She has been in this uh, business for many, many, many years. She is one of our local leaders um, in our community in business and in government. So she's a wealth of knowledge and amazing contact um, if you are looking to do business with Miami-Dade County. Uh, so with that, how you doing, Ms. LaWanda Wright? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so very much, Matthew, for you guys having me here today. Truly appreciate the Chamber and all that you guys do for the business community. Excellent, excellent. All right, so I'm going to cut off my video and you got, you got the floor, all right? <laughs> all right. I'm going to share my screen. And you see one screen or two screens? We see one screen, and that's the PowerPoint. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm glad to definitely be a part of uh, the series that the Chamber is doing to definitely enlighten and encourage and inform the business community uh, through various uh, informational sessions. So today we're going to talk about the Office of Small Business Development and how you can do business with Miami-Dade County government. Uh, many people feel that the government is too busy, too big. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that I can do. Um, well, hopefully today I can give you some insight to see if that's something that you're interested in. Um, talk a little bit about our program and what we buy and we sell. And if that's something you are interested in, you can definitely, I'll put my information in the chat, my contact information so that you can also contact me later on. So to get started, um, Small Business Development was created to promote our local businesses here in Miami-Dade County. We want to be able to simulate the economic growth of this community by definitely allowing and encouraging our local businesses to do business with the county government. And we do that by coordinating and implementing several administrative programs in order to provide business opportunities, contract opportunities to the small business community so that you're able to grow. And in addition to that, we administer several county ordinances, and that's currently at about 10 and the 11th month about to be approved, that were created to increase small business participation on county contracts. Right now, our budget was approved in October, which is a new budget year, at $11 billion, that's billion with a B. And uh, we have a mandate of 10% 10, 10 of county spending to go to our certified small businesses. Now that's a lot of money. And so, you know, there is a way for you to get a piece of that pie and, and working with our office and getting into our program. And so our small business enterprise certification is not a minority certification. We certify businesses in construction, goods, services, architectural engineering. The certification is free and it's a three year program. And so you have to be licensed and perform a commercial useful function. You have to have a Miami-Dade County local business tax receipt for at least one year prior, prior to applying for the certification. So example is we're December 7th. You should have had your local business tax receipt from Miami-Dade County as of December 7th, 2022 to be eligible for the certified small business enterprise certification. We do look at the payday. You can also become a registered supplier with the strategic procurement department. Um, that is separate from our certification program, but that is the best way the county knows that you exist outside of becoming certified. You must have a place of business in Miami-Dade County. So physical business location, we will not certify virtual businesses. And then we look at the gross receipts, gross revenues for the last three years. If you've only been in business for two years, we'll look at what you've done in two years because it is a small business program. That's why I say it's race and gender neutral, not minority based. And each owner must have a, cannot exceed a personal net worth of $1.5 million. So if you share your business with your spouse or three other owners, we look at each owner individually and the value of your home is excluded from that because we do know we live in Miami and those home values have gone up tremendously for all of us. And so if, there, if you're in a trade where there is a mandate to have a license, you must have a license. And the, the qualifier must have a, a ownership in the company. So this is a quick and dirty of the gross receipts requirement. If you are in construction, 
your qualifier, which is a license holder, must own at least 10% of the business and have stock interest and document it in the business. You cannot exceed a three-year average for general building construction of $15 million, $12 million for heavy construction, and $8 million for your specialty trade contractors. Now, all of those amounts have gone up in the last year. They will lower, but we had some companies that graduated from out of our program and realized it's still difficult getting um, contracts out there outside of government um, unless they're in a program. So we added a fourth tier, which is why the amounts are much larger. Um, so we look at a maximum, not a minimum. And then for the goods and service industry, you cannot exceed a three-year average of $8 million. But if you are a wholesaler or manufacturer, we go by the number of employees. And they also have a 10% qualifier interest in the business, um, whoever qualifies the business in goods and services. Now for architectural engineers, engineers, the qualifier, the license holder have to own at least 25% interest in the business. And then their gross receipts cannot exceed $6.5 million for three years for architects and $8 million for, for the engineer landscape and architecture. We're also one of the agencies within the state of Florida that does the disadvantaged business enterprise certification and the airport concessions um, certification. This is not our local program. This is a state program. It is not a um, race and gender neutral. This one is more minority based. And so it's federally funded contracts go through those contracts. And it doesn't limit you just to Dade County. Like I said, it's through the state. So when you certify with us, Miami-Dade County as a D DBE, you're good through the entire state of Florida. And so that means you can deal with other entities that have federal dollar contracts for DBEs. And what are those departments normally? That could be your aviation, your transit and public works, your housing, it could even be um, a few other, uh, and your transit authorities. And so you wanna make sure that if there's something that you're interested in, we do do that application here. Um, and that application is online, just like our on, is online. So why get certified? You know, you wanna say, well, Luanda, you know, I do some of these trades, but I'm not sure if that's something that I wanna do. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we carve out 10% of county spending must go to our certified SBE firms. And so whether it's 10% from holistically across the entire county, but we've been really, we've had good success on our user departments like your aviation or your seaport doing their own 10% of their spending. And those are some major departments with like billions of dollars of contracts out there. And so you have access to those contracts that we carve out, we review and carve out for our certified firms. Um, they, we have an opportunity to put a set aside on a contract. And so what is a set aside? Say we wanna buy um, office supply for our county buildings, which we have over 200 something county buildings, right? We will review a contract that's coming out to say we're gonna you know, do office supplies in two of the buildings. We're going to re survey our certified small businesses to say, hey, you know, do you have the, are you ready, available, willing, and have the capacity, inventory, whatever it needs it is, or have access to obtain those things. If all of their responses, and it's based on their responses, if all of their responses are yes, then we can make a set aside, which means when it is advertised to the public, only certified SBEs can respond and be awarded. So that meant you just went from a pool of a couple hundred firms generally bidding to a small little pond, small little group of vendors bidding. And so that is our number one way to carve out opportunities. When we can't do that, and say so we have, and say that contract was estimated to be about uh, $500,000. We had five office supply companies. They all said, yes, we made that a set aside. But what if that contract was $5 million? And our companies responded to us and said, hey, that's you know a little beyond my capacity. They're being truthful about, truthful about what they can do. Then what we'll do is assess what everybody says their capacity is and make a recommendation that a percentage of that, that project, which becomes a small business goal, is subcontracted out to a certified small business. So that means if it's $5 million and we say 10%, 
have to be contracted to a certified small business, that 10% equals what? $500,000, right? And so that's still a way for them to get an opportunity to get that bid. But in cases where we have only one company available and ready, um, even do a portion of the work, we'll put a bid preference, which is if they happen to bid and we're going to call and contact them and say, hey, this is coming out, we'll give them a bid preference for bidding because there's only one company doing that work. And so always a piece of the pie, a way to carve out the opportunities. And then we have um, for our construction firms, a program that's called the MCC 7040, which is miscellaneous <laughs> construction contracts. So everyone that's certified in construction, they get into that pool. Now this is like the whole low hanging fruit for construction firms. All of our departments that wanna do construction work and these are construction contracts that are up to $5 million. They pull off of this pool. It's a rotational pool. So it's a great way to get an opportunity. Now, the problem is you can't wait for a particular type of value or department contract. It's rotating. So when the contracts are coming out, we solicit a few companies. If you're one of the ones in the groups that's being solicited, you need to respond. You can't wait for the big one. Um, because you may, as a pool is rotating, you may miss out on what an opportunity that was really doable trying to get a big one. Um, and then for the architecture engineering company, we have something similar also, another pool called the equitable distribution program. And so everything that we do, we have legislation that mandates and governs that the vendors, our SBE firms should be paid in a timely manner, what their contract requirements are, what the department's responsibility is for our SBEs, um, and we work with them hand in hand to make sure that everybody's adhering to their requirements. Um, and I say one of the best caveats to being certified is even if you don't get a contract with Miami-Dade County government immediately, you're put in a public list because we're one of the one out of two agencies in Miami-Dade County that does certification. The other agency is Miami-Dade County Public Schools, which is separate from us. But to be certified with us means Jackson Hospital puts out contracts for our companies. Miami Day Expressway Authority uses our certified firms. Miami Day College uses our certified firms. City of Miami uses our certified firms. So you can easily be solicited from one of these other entities just because you're certified with us. So that is definitely a win-win situation. Certification is completely online. It's free, once again. Um, we have a system that we bought from business to government now that we call business management workforce. So this system is great because it not only can you submit your brand new application, you can do your renewal, you can update your contacts. This is where your contracts, once you award, will be lifted at also. You can see, you know, if you have um, payroll requirements, it will also be uh, pushed into this system. So it's a, it's a holistic system, a one-stop shop as far as an SBE is concerned. Now my unit, um, myself and my unit, we provide management and technical assistance. So I do workshops like this. I coordinate outreach events to recruit local businesses. So if you know other businesses, this is not a best kept secret. Tell other businesses about the small business program. Believe me, the more competition you have, the more opportunities we can pull out. And so we do a one-on-one -on -one needs assessment meeting with a certified firm. This will be to determine if they need business resources, do we need to refer them to the chamber as a resource, do we need to refer them to other entities for services that we don't provide. Um, but we will definitely sit down with them to assess who has the contract that they're looking for, the type of work that they provide, are there trainings that we, the county, provide that they need to be looking into. Uh, we will do that assessment. Um, we will also assist with contract and payment and performance issues on county contracts once awarded. We'll continue to provide um, informational workshops like we do you know, every year something on capital, accessing capital, taxation, bonding, um, contracting requirements. We'll do different various workshops throughout the year for that. And then one of the newest things that we have relaunched um, this past May was our mentor protege program. And our protégés are the certified firms, mentors are larger companies that we put an agreement together one-on-one, um, -on -one. it's a one-year commitment to both the mentor and the protege. Right now, we're at a six-month mark, and it's been phenomenal. I've heard great feedbacks from our mentors and our protégés. It's made a big difference where they're working on those SWOT analysis and those 
strengths and weaknesses and how, from a mentor standpoint and showing the best practices to this protege. So I'm excited about that and looking forward to new mentor proteges this coming May. Now the area that looks at these contracts and cars are opportunities in our division, our section is the project review and analysis section. They look at every county contract. They wanna see who is about to put out what contracts in any of the areas, the goods, the services, the construction, the architectural engineering, to determine what we can put a set aside, which I remember that's the number one goal or a small business goal or bid preference on. And so you're talking about a lot of contracts coming through that section. Um, and one of the low hanging fruits that I love um, that we've done in the past two years is on goods and service contracts. So like promotional items, janitorial services, supplies, office supplies. If a user department plans to put out a contract less than $250,000, as long as we have two certified firms ready, available and willing, we made that a set aside. If it's over 250,000, then we just need three and we make that a set aside. And so, you know, sometimes the department's like, oh, you know, I have a pool of, I have a listing of 20 companies and only five are certified. Sorry, the purpose of our program is to encourage and push our certified small businesses. You know, and, and if they can't do the work or bid on it, then they can solicit the general public. And so we will also attend um, and, and share the requirements of a small, business program to pre-bid meetings, to pre-submittal meetings, pre-construction meetings, you name it, anything that the department is doing that involves a certified small business enterprise, we will be in attendance to those meetings. So this page here is a page that everyone should be visiting two to three times a week. Why? Because all those projects that I mentioned that, that the project review section review um, receives, they're listed here. So even the ones we haven't even reviewed yet, but we received them. If you're in construction, you can look there to see what we receive. If you're in architecture engineering, you can look here. And so this is your heads up. This is what's been sent to us to review, which will eventually be advertised. And so when they send it, it gets uploaded here. And the ones who you'll see on that same page, it'll say um, recommendation, SBD recommendation. Those are the ones we have reviewed and what we've recommended to the department to advertise with that project. And so it's a way to gear up to see if you need, you know, to get capital, if you need staffing, equipment, whatever it is, it's your, it's, it's a best um, idea to see what the county's buying. Now, pre-qualification pools, you know, a pool contract um, is a, a, a contract that allows any use a department to do spot market purchases. So they can be small purchases, they can be big purchases. We have about 200 and something, about 221, I believe, pre-qualification pools. This is, if you are in janitorial services, you pre-qualify on the contract, then you go into this short listing and as a housing department or a transit department or the facilities um, department have a need for those services, they pull, they solicit off of that pool. Easy way to get contracts. So definitely you can always contact me and my team to say what pools exist, is any exist in my trade, and we'll send you information to get registered in the pool. Now, the pools can be three years, they can be five years. Um, if it's an open pool and it's a three-year pool and one year's passed, you can still get into that pool and have an opportunity for the next two years. So when it's an open pool, you still have time as long as the pool is open to take advantage of the opportunities that's gonna to come to that pool. Everything that we do in the county is as under the Florida Sunshine Law is public records, public information. And so one of the things I always recommend is if you're bidding on a contract that we've previously done this type of contract, go and look at the previously awarded contract email the department, request a copy of the old solicitation to see who was awarded, what was the price, you know, what scope of work was asked for it so that you can make an informed decision on this new contract. It gives you an idea as to what was done. Now, I'm going to give my personal disclaimer. You shouldn't be bidding the exact same price as the previously awarded bid or lower than that. Because most likely if it was two or three year contract, the cost of living, the cost of, of, of life and materials and things have changed. 
So you need to beat your, you know, what you know you can afford to do. Um, and so always just do a public records request is the best way to find out what we've done in the past and to be better informed for new opportunities. In my section, I have a manager. Um, he works closely with our firms if you need bonding assistance, especially for construction companies. Um, the area that's in the service that needs bonding is, is security services. Those contracts are very high, vol uh, high dollar value, and so they would need bonding also. But if you need lending and financial assistance, Carlos was once a banker. He has the experience. He knows what the banks are looking for. He knows what the other loan opportunities are with our general um, the business community. And then we're hoping to, in the next year, kick off our loan program. This loan program will allow for an SBE to submit your invoices for costs that you've incurred, and we will reimburse up to 80% of that for your contract value. So you're not waiting, even though as a certified firm, you should be paid within 14 days of an approved invoice, but we don't want you to be waiting for payment. Um, when you're working with a county contract and you're certified, you should put that you're certified small business enterprise at the top, header of your invoices, so that a user department knows to keep your stuff moving. Now, what are some challenges that we've seen? And, and I, I like to really address these matters because I've had businesses that are new, very seasoned, that have been around for a little while, that still make the same mistakes. And these are things that I promise you, if you take heed to them, you will do good business with the county. Be at your worth. Know your numbers. Know if you're going to need 10 employees and there's an hourly rate for those employees for so many hours, you need to know what you can afford to do. So you need to bid that. Don't leave money on the table. Now, I'm not trying to say come and try to hit the county over the head to get rich with this million dollars because then they're going to find that that's not even reasonable. But understand what's truly needed of you and your team and your company, if it's inventory, whatever it is, and, and bid that. Um, know the contract terms. When you submit a response to a solicitation, that's your boilerplate for your contract. If it says that you need to supply materials or items within 30 to 45 days, you need to be able to do that because you don't want to be found in default of a contract. Understand that if there are delays, if they say there's a, a, a penalty for delay on their part or your part, what that means. Um, if they say they want a, a specific type of item and they may accept you know, compatible items, you need to be clear on that. But even if you're not sure before you submit your bid, ask a question in writing to the contracting officer and the clerk of the board, because then they have to respond back to you and you wanna be clear before you submit a bid. And know your capacity, as I mentioned before, knowing financially where you are, if you can afford the payroll, the equipment, if you're in a service industry, if something happens and you need more supplies, do you have the wherewithal and the capacity? Um, but you can work with Carlos in trying to figure out what that capacity looks like financially. And then we have contracts where there's a wage requirements in construction and in services for like landscaping and janitor services, those contracts, there's a wage requirement that you have to meet at a minimum. Um, and so you can always inquire based on the classification, the labor job description, what's the minimum wage requirement. So if you put that in there, that means we're willing to pay it because there, we put a mandate. And so it's surprising to me when I have people submit a, a service contract bid for like for services right now, I think the minimum wage if you're not paying benefits is maybe $18.56 an hour or something like that. And they come in to be at $10 an hour. So I'm not going to let a user department award a company who hasn't even not meeting the wage requirements because there's a compliance section on the back end of everything that's going to come and audit you and see, did you pay minimum the, the wage that we stipulated at a minimum? So know the wage requirement. Know if there's a workforce requirement to have local um, laborers on your contracts. We help you with all of this. You can call, we'll put you in with the team that does that. They'll train you on it, how to use the system, you name it. And as I mentioned too, do your research, see what was previously awarded um, and ask questions and ask more questions, but put it in writing, um, get everything in writing. Even once you are awarded, if they're asking you to do something that's different from the scope of work, put it in writing, copy me and my team. 
because then I can fight for you for what's in black and white. You know, you can call and say, hey, Lawanda, this is what they're asking me to do. I don't see this in the contract. And then we can advise you on what you can do. I can't tell you what to do, but I can give you advice. Um, as Matthew said, I've been doing this for 20 years and I enjoy what I do. I want to see businesses, especially our local businesses, to be successful. And whatever I can do is for providing you information, making the right connections and contacts for you within this county. So be it. This is how you can reach my team uh, and myself. Um, I have my team broken up by the alphabet. Uh, I'm hoping to have some filler fill-ins very soon, employee staff, um, but you can reach us at any point in time. And then after all of that, if you say, you know what, I don't know if I want to be certified, but I still want to do business with the county government, then all you need to do is register as a supplier with the strategic procurement department. Once again, that's free, that's online. Um, that process is much shorter and simpler than certification, but it basically tells Miami-Dade County government, hey, I exist, this is what I wanna sell you, this is what I do. And you don't have to be located in Miami-Dade for that one. You can be located anywhere to be a county supplier. And so you, there are trainings on how to bid, there's trainings on the expectation as a supplier, um, there's training on the system. Um, the informed system that they use now is a system that you not only register as a vendor, you can see where the, the contract are being solicited through that same system. You can see if you're being paid for an invoice um, through that same system. So it has several different purposes to use that um, informed system. And if you have questions with that system, these are the people you will contact. The Vendor Outreach Services Office, and they are definitely some in the office some days, but I will recommend you email them and then have someone will reach out to you about becoming a registered vendor. And that is it for me. That's how you can reach. Um, I look at our website. And I'll tell you, look at Miami-Dade County, miami-dade.gov, and just play around with the system to see what the various departments are, what they're doing. A lot of departments share a lot of their contract opportunities on their website. Um, and you can't break our system, but just go and look to see. That's a link there for certification. And if you have specific questions and emails for SBD, that we have a general mail and we have a front desk. And I'm going to stop sharing. And if there's anybody who has any questions, I am now available. But thank you, Matthew. Um, I always enjoy doing this. And I, I hope the businesses have learned something new and once again, share it with others. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, uh, Ms. Wright. You always clearly lay things out about the opportunities that we have. Um, so really appreciate you and the work that you do um, over at Miami-Dade County and especially advocating for small businesses. Um, you always available in the community making things happen so we appreciate that so we're going to um, open it up for questions um, if you can raise your hand I would love for you to um, since we got us a little time I want to give you opportunity to ask your questions just as though we would do in a, a meeting so I'm going to unmute the uh, mic for those that are um, uh, want to ask their questions just raise your hand um, introduce yourself um, your business and feel free to ask your questions so I have uh, Miriam King. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, Miss Luanda, how are you? Good morning, good to you. Um, wanted to just ask, is there a way to um, schedule like a pre-qualification meeting with you? So let's say I've got some documentation in place, but not all of it, and I'm not quite ready to certify. Is there a way to just schedule time with you to walk through all of those steps to make sure that the application process is complete? Yes, before I I'm glad it? you said that. Um, not only with me, I'm with one of my team members, but if any of you want to do that, which I love that um, you can email me and I'll schedule between either myself or my team. And what we even do also is, you know, we know not everybody is technologically driven. So we have in our office an area where we have computers set up to where, okay, once we say this is everything you're going to need documentation wise, and you say, okay, I'm going to come back and I want to do the process online here, we will schedule a certification specialist to sit with you while you're doing that application then you can upload everything here and have it done because once you start an application in our system you have 90 days to complete that application or the system completely kicks it out like you never existed so i love the fact that you want to pull everything together first that you want to make sure you have everything and so like some of those key documents are your tax returns the proof that you own the business your annual report 
um, the license, if you have any license, your local business tax receipt, um, ownership, if you're renting a lease, uh, leasing, leasing a space, we need a copy of the lease agreement. So those general business things um, that every business should have sitting somewhere are important. Um, you can have that and we can always schedule time for you to come into the office. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. King. So uh, while I uh, people are ready to raise their hands because um, immediately after the questions, we're going to uh, wrap up. So if you have any questions directly you want to have to uh, Ms. Luana Wright, definitely raise your hand and we'll call you up uh, for that. Um, do that ASAP so that um, after this next round, I will we will be um, wrapping up. So um, before we um, go on, Ms. Wright, um, I would love for you to give a little insight into uh, small business community actually working with the county. Uh, what have, because there's a lot of small businesses that think that we're going to jump into government contracting. It's going to be our first uh, contract. Uh, first thing we do, we open up a business and automatically we're just going to win a contract uh, with the government. Uh, could you give a more realistic picture of um, the time frame have you seen of businesses actually securing a contract? Uh, maybe where they are in terms of uh, revenue, uh, how many years in business, how long they may have had to wait to secure um, once they register to actually actually secure a contract and with the mind of those that are successful uh, mm -hmm. because there's some people that get those government contracts and it's a huge burden on their business. Mm -hmm. could, you, could you just talk more about um, that? Now I've seen over my tenure a lot. And so what I've seen work and I'm proud to see these people do that was I saw people literally um, attend several events and meetings, just constantly gathering information, meeting the different various departments that may sell, may buy what they're selling. Just they were doing their homework. They were networking. They were seeing what's really out there. They were talking to those who were on contracts. Now, I know everybody may not have that time, but I tell you, if you invest the time in going to some of these outreach events and meetings, it makes a big difference, especially those where we have departments present. And so I've seen businesses do that for you know, several months, submit their application. They had um, some capacity and access to capital in place of enough to do what they know they wanted to do. Um, got in, contacted those departments, say, hey, I'm certified because networking is key. You can contact the departments. You can contact them directly and say, hey, it's a new fiscal year. We're in December. You guys know what your budget has been approved for. Um, do you sell such and such? Have you did a contract on this? And then they look out for it and they communicate with them, you know, every, every couple of weeks. When that bid comes out, they read it. They ask questions in writing because it's under the cone of silence where they'll call me and my team and say, hey, they're saying this. What does this mean? Um, they're requesting this. The, what does this mean? They constantly ask questions and was in communication. So when they won, when they bid and they actually won, they called back and said, hey, I won, I'm ready, you know, um, can I ramp up? And they and they've got the moving. And I saw several businesses, one, two, three in services, particularly, that did that. And when I tell you they're doing great business with the county, they're to the point where they've expanded their portfolio and doing other lines of trade than what they originally started out with um, in a nice, steady, slow pace. And then I've seen those who were really kind of almost big almost, but came in, did what they were supposed to do, but then they pulled others with them. So not only were they eager and excited to be doing work as an SB in a medium to large size company, but they realized, you know what, let me not do this by myself. They were able to carve out, you know, when we put goals on measures for small businesses, pulling other small businesses that they knew or wanted to get to know and started pulling them into their contracts. So our number one goal is to definitely give opportunities, but we love it when a business comes in and is willing to pull in other businesses to do work. So like that's why I say it's not a best kept secret. Tell your people you know about it. And then when you're networking, you meet people and you and you partner up and they weren't afraid to do that. They say, okay, you know what? I'm willing to do this. Um, I, I want to be a mentor. Um, I want to be a part of this program. And so it's, I tell anyone it's doable, but you got to ask questions. You got to show up. You got to know your capacity and you got to be consistent. 
and realize your business is on the line. Uh, as a business owner, you want to make sure that your staff understands this is your business that's on the line and they have a stake in it. So they can't be misrepresenting you as a business, especially in our service businesses. We see it a lot, unfortunately, that the employees are just out doing the work. They don't care that they don't have the uniform. They're not um, coming in on time. They're not signing in. But those that do and they respect the fact that the business owner is um, saying that they have a stake in their business too, that they're representing and this is this is their contract too. They are, they're more loyal and respectful and responsible on the contract. So those are the things that work. Um, but it's doable. Is it overnight success? No. It can be. And usually those that are overnight don't want to grow too fast because then you crash. Um, but I've seen quite a few companies in construction um, also that have just come in and they hit the payment running they were everywhere. They were talking to the right persons. As a matter of fact, several of your chamber members. Um, I, I, I oh, talk. really? Yes, <laughs> yes definitely. Um, they came in, they followed, they asked questions, they got some contracts, they learned some lessons, and they're doing very well. Um, and so, and I'm very eager to see that because what the chamber has done as far as giving exposure to other resources they're, they're making it work. And so it's doable. Hear me. I know it's a big government. I know it's a lot, but we are here to help. We are so here to help. And all I can do is give you advice, but I can tell you we've been doing this for a while. I'm kind of known as a pit bull in the community, in the, in the county. And I'm okay with that because I want to advocate for you guys. I want to make sure that if you tell me, Miss Luanda, okay, I really want to do this contract, but I don't, I can't, I don't have the capacity myself. So I'm going to suggest if you thought about partnering with someone, I don't know why we're afraid to partner, but you can do your homework and you do diligence on other businesses and partner because it's better than you partner with someone and have a great opportunity to work on a contract. Then you miss an opportunity altogether. Excellent. Excellent. So I, I just want to kind of uh, piggyback and emphasize a few things that she mentioned uh, in terms of this time frame. Number one, she said networking and showing up to the events. So to be able to show up, that means you have to have a capacity within your business for it to run while you as a business owner and the leader, because this isn't something that you can get someone else to do. As the business owner and the leader, you have to go and show up to those events, network with the departments. She didn't say just go to her. The departments that you are actually going to do business with, finding out their needs, who are the key people, that takes time to build that level of relationship and trust. Second, she said, you also have access to capital. Majority of the capital programs that we um, assist with, they need you to be in business for at least two years and showing profit and consistent revenue for those two years where they're going to lend you money. And if you're doing a county contract, that means you need to have a level of fiscal responsibility and infrastructure to be able to access enough capital to do the job. So being able to have that capital is also important. She also mentioned that you have to be in your business. Not only do you need to have that financial infrastructure, you need to network, but you got to be able to take the time outside of actually doing the service networking, running your business, handling employees to read and learn about those bids, to follow up, ask questions and be that leader, not paying somebody else to do everything. Um, there's a certain level of ownership that a business owner have to have because when you re connect with uh, Miss Wright or those department heads, they want to know that you have the, the capacity and you understand this. So the questions you ask. Um, the and then, go ahead. So sometimes because you are the owner who's doing everything and you say, okay, it's hard for me to get everywhere. But one of the things, because you don't have the staffing. But if one of our biggest problems I've, I've found in our businesses is their back office, their operational skill, operational staff is non-existent. You have places in organizations like Career Source South Florida that have staffing 
They have a business program, not just for people that are looking for jobs, but businesses can go to get staffing. That career source will pay for a certain amount of hours of that staffing for you. So if you need an administrative person to be at the phone and, and make sure your calendar and stuff is done so that can free you up as a business owner, take advantage of what Career Source South Florida has also. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Because the last point that she said is being consistent. So you need that person that is doing that work so that you can be out there doing all these things in order to secure government contract. Cause you have to have a back office. If you're going to be successful at government contracting, there's a lot of compliance things, um, certified payroll, all the things that you have to do. If you want to maintain compliance and continue to be a, a government contractor. And that is extremely hard. Uh, almost impossible for just a business owner to do. So uh, thank you for, for, for laying that out, uh, Ms. Wright. So I'm going to um, bring up our question. We have uh, Gloria Fonseca. How are you? Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Gloria? You got to unmute your good mic. Good morning, good morning. Guess where I am at? Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. But uh, I, love the, I love the smile of you, too. Thank you to Matthew for being the one that is always representing us, the minorities, looking for opportunities. Our chamber that I joined four years ago, and since I joined the chamber, everything changed for my company. And thank you for Luanda, because Luanda, everybody, she said I'm like at the top of the top, and she is unreachable, and she is the more kind, um, efficient, Service from the country. Thank you, Luanda. Thank you. Uh, we have learned many things. My example of what I had done with uh, with my company is everything that she just presented. I had been learning, 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 uh, attending, attending, and just making sure that my company can get everything when the opportunity raised, and and I have been able to get the contracts. Well, so Gloria, you're I the person start... I was talking about, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everything uh, is because God has given me the, the favor to be able to, to really deliver what I promise. And um, without education, we cannot do anything. Without knowing how to do the right things, we can just, you know, jump into the things that probably we won't be able to really follow through. And that's very important. So I have a question because um, I know and I am familiar with the set size program and those are the best programs that the county always has. And I, I, know, I was trying to apply for one um, solicitation and they told me that I need to wait because I was in the four line, uh, the four line because they were, you mentioned it before, so um, you, I was not able to get the invitation first because there were other companies before me. Rotation, I believe, is the name that you mentioned. It. So I would like to understand better that. And the other one is um, now that we have been able to really work with the county, how I can better serve as a, as a mentor because I know the Protege program, we, the chamber, have been one of the leaders you know, making sure that we impl implement that program everywhere. So can you please elaborate it for me? So for the rotation, what happens is, say a user department, um, I'll use Seaport example. Seaport wants to put out a contract with for electrical work. Because remember the rotation for the MCC 7040 is what she's talking about, is for construction only. If Seaport wants to put out an electrical contract, they're going to go to the MCC list for all the license, because it's driven by license, electrical contractors. And they're going to say, you know, it's an $80,000 project. They only want to have 10 SBEs to bid on it. So whoever's at the top 10 of the list are the ones who's going to be invited. Now, anything over a million dollars will invite everybody that's in the electrical uh, license. But for those 10, she might have been number 15. And so those 10 get the opportunity to bid. Whoever wins goes down, the other ones move up and she moves to 14. But that's why it's invitation. So even though it's rotational, it's by invitation. So unless you're in the a number of um, firms they're asking to be solicited, 
then if you're not, you can't bid on it because you have to be invited. But if it was over a million dollars, then they probably would have uh, emailed everyone that's in the electrical and she would have been a part of that. And then the rotation would have still moved. But when it's a certain dollar value and the department only wants to invite five people or 10 people to bid that's licensed, that's already in the pool, it's only going to be those next five in the listing. You got me, Gloria? Yes, ma'am. Yes, now I understand better. And now we're making sure that we continue applying for those. And I just want to encourage you, and I know that you always do it, but as a reminder, um, that the county can break down the, the, the projects that way um, construction trades companies, we can get a piece. And thank you, because I know that you have been always advocating for that. For that. Yes, definitely. And as far as the mentor protege, we will be in January um, doing another uh, push to pull in more proteges and I am soliciting as many mentors as possible and I'll be hitting the chamber up for big prime companies um, and, and meet them to large companies that can also be mentors um, and so we'll we'll narrow that down but the key is I can't have a lot of mentor protege parents because it's based on the number of staff I have available to uh, to meet because they meet with every mentor protege relationship and I don't have that many staff and so that's doable, but I will say this to anyone else that's interested, you have major capital departments like aviation and transit that's about to, even though they've already been doing, put out billions of dollars of work over the next several years. And so if you're interested, you know, no matter whether you're in a, a goods, a service, a construction or, or architecture engineering, there are major contracts about to come down this pipeline. If you drive around Miami, you see what's happening. People don't realize what's the county own and what the county is, um, is responsible for. So, so for example, even if it's a privately owned company that is building on a county owned property, we have a say in pull it, carving out opportunities. You know, so we wanna make sure that follow our websites, look at the county departments, we'll be uh, publishing any public meetings on the county county calendar so you can look to see what project meetings are happening because even if you are a piece of a bigger pie of a contract you want to be in the room you want to be able to network okay i just got the certification from the uh, aviation the acb i just got it so i want to utilize it and i want to learn better how i can do that definitely yes yeah. thank you all right, so uh, thank you, uh, Lawanda, again, for coming in and uh, really just being open and honest um, and advocating uh, for our businesses. Uh, love the, the shout outs to our Miami-Dade Chamber of Businesses because we do make sure our businesses um, get those contracts and have access. It's part of what we do um, at the Chamber. And just to um, give everyone an idea of uh, more about what we do. This is part of our technical assistance program. And, and what we do is we help businesses take what you just heard uh, from Lawanda and from others and put it into practice. And we sit down one-on-one -on -one with um, small businesses to help them understand what they need to get their back office together to plan to get those certification capability statements so while you can't meet with technical assistance representative at the county you can meet with us first before you go to them to make sure that that's a very smooth and efficient process so we want you to step correct when you go to them as part of our technical assistance program um, we also work with businesses to get their business plan and marketing plans, develop that financial infrastructure so they can access capital and develop those business habits and systems. Um, but one of the biggest things is generating revenue because you need revenue, period, if you're going to secure these government contracts. So we work step by step with businesses and helping them detail their products and services, identifying their ideal clients, working on closing a sale, delivering testimonials. So you can come to us to help you get your business together. And you can also come to these workshops to learn more. And we have these workshops and the recordings um, up on our website so you can check them out. Um, and every single, this is just one of the many events that we do. Um, that's some, our technical assistance workshops are basically monthly events that we have, but every Tuesday at four o'clock, we bring together businesses to talk. We bring together our partners from the county, the airport, career source, 
on the call every single Tuesday. Um, this past Tuesday, um, yesterday, hold on, today's Thursday. So this past Tuesday, we had a conversation about what's the year in review, where business owners talked about from those that just started their business to those in 20 years in business, what do they do at the end of the year? Uh, to review what were some of their challenges over the past year what were some of their accomplishments um, so that we can build that community and know that you're not in this alone so you use that qr code or go to our website www.m-dcc.org um, in our event section to sign up and register for our small business uh, meetup um, next week, we will be having the vice president of the Better Business Bureau um, on to talk about uh, BBB certification, things of that nature. Um, we have we have plenty of upcoming events, such as our um, Black Chamber Day. We we are um, in connection with chambers all across the state of Florida, and we're going up to Tallahassee in February um, to advocate on behalf of our businesses. So uh, definitely check that out coming up. And if you would like any assistance, I do want to uh, bring up my colleague Gina Ortella. Um, she's in the back end, making sure that all this is together, um, and also she does our technical assistance um sessions so if you would like to book appointment uh, with myself or Gina and um, you can scan that and um, reach out to us and we will sit down with you one-on-one -on -one. so as representative of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce I'm on behalf of our president um, Eric Knowles and our team uh, Beverly J uh, James who's our VP of Finance and also Paris Ward Executive Assistance uh, we're here to serve our members um, and serve you so if you would like to um, join and be a part of the chamber uh, reach out to us. We're here to support and serve you. But most importantly, take full advantage of our technical assistance. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to learn about the chamber. And I want to thank uh, Ms. LaWanda Wright, um, uh, our Miami-Dade County Mayor, uh, Danielle Levine Cava, and also the um, director of the small business, Mr. Gary Hartfield, and all the whole team over there for taking the time to be amazing partners um, with the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. We couldn't do our work and have our success stories uh, without you. So th thank you very much, Ms. Wright, for representing today and doing an excellent job. Really appreciate you. Thank you always for having me, and I truly appreciate the Chamber and look forward to definitely working with more of your Chamber members and getting certified and doing business with the county. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So thank you very much. Y'all have a great day. Say, hey, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> thank everyone for being a part of it. And we look forward to seeing you. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good evening. A good day. All right.